A very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Al Muli. Welcome to this very special explainer again. And this time we'll be talking about something that has been hugging a lot of media space, the Uniform Civil Code. And interestingly, but not surprisingly, the government of Nagaland has rejected the Uniform Civil Code uh, by a unanimous decision in the assembly during the second session of the 14th Nagaland Legislative Assembly. So today we'll be discussing a little bit about how this thing works and what was the reasons behind that the government of Nagaland thought that. Although, I mean, if, if I may add here, the NDPP in Nagaland is allied with a Bharatiya Janata Party at the center. And of course, it was the agenda of the BJP to make sure that the Uniform Civil Code would be implemented across the state. And of course, there were a lot of people who actually thought that because the NDBP is allied with the BJP, there was no way that there would be any kind of unanimous uh, rejection of the Uniform Civil Code, which was one of the main electoral promises that the BJP gave way back four years ago and now the question here is not necessarily about politicking and whether the agenda of conflicting political parties uh, uh, was was something that was not taken into account because both of them are allies there and somehow people were actually believing that the NDPP would not really push against the uniform civil code so um, that was a little bit of a surprise, but then again, we have to remember that Naglin is the only state in the country that we do not have an opposition, which fortunately or unfortunately meant that there would be no, no deep conversations about how or in what way the UCC, whether its implications, if it's implemented, would be uh, would be hard on Naglin, and what would be the way forward for Naglin if it were implemented, and even if not, what would be the political value that the ruling dispensation would have later in the future. So we'll be just generally talking about a little of these things in this program. Uh, so we'll go over the news a little bit. The 14 Nagaland Legislative Assembly resolved uh, yesterday on seeking exemption from the proposed inaction of the uh, Uniform Civil Code in regards to its application and implementation in the state of Nagaland. I think you might have been watching the news, the controversial Uniform Civil Code, uh, as you know it, ladies and gentlemen, aims to establish a uniform legal framework for all its citizens, regardless of their religion, regardless of your faith and your uh, sexuality, or your race, or your caste. The court is a pro proposal to formulate and implement personal laws of citizens which apply on all citizens equally regardless of their religion, gender, sexual orientation and social class. Uh, the Uniform Civil Court aims to enforce a uniform legal framework on all citizens without any distinctions. Uh, right now, personal matters including marriage, divorce and succession are all governed by religion-based personal laws. The Christians have their own laws in regards to divorce and inheritance of property, in regard to marriage, family disputes. The Muslims, they have their own separate personal laws in regard to all these personal matters of marriages or inheritance. The Hindus have their own and all the sub-communities, uh, especially the tribal communities in India, they all have separate, distinct and recognized personal laws of their own. So in brief, the Uniform Civil Code attempts to quantify all this. So let's say the UCC is implemented across India. It wouldn't recognize your religious practices or your cultural practices. You will be treated the same as the government would treat the Muslim or the Hindu, the Christian or the Jains. So there would be, in that sense, equality enforcement of laws in the country. So the Uniform Civil Court is actually part of part, of, part four of the Constitution of India, which includes the 
directive principles of state policy we have talked about this earlier article 44 in the directive principles of state policy says that the state shall work to secure for all its citizens a uniform civil code a single codified law a range organized single codified law throughout the territory of India, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the assembly session yesterday, the Nagalin Assembly unanimously adopted a resolution urging the state to be exempted from the purview of the Uniform Civil Court. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in his address to the assembly, uh, Chief Minister Nefirio said that the proposed law would, this is in quotes, pose a threat to the state's customary laws social practices and religious practices. Uh, the members of the Nagaland Legislative Assembly uh, mm, on Monday opposed the Uniform Civil Court. You might have been watching the debate going on in the State Assembly yesterday. Uh, in case you missed the uh, conversations in this regard, you may go over to Hornbill TV YouTube channel and you can check it out. Uh, on Tuesday, the Assembly also Besides the discussions and their vocal opposition to the Uniform Civil Court, they later adopted a resolution against the proposed law. It is still a bill, technically. It's still not yet a law. So after the Chief Minister uh, introduced the resolution against the Uniform Civil Court, the Assembly adopted it, urging that the state should be completely exempted from the purview of the proposed uniform civil court uh, if you remember where discussions about this earlier to the Nagaland democratic uh, the Nagaland democratic progressive party had been uh, did i say Nagaland? Uh, it should be nationalist democratic progressive party so the party had been insistent on the ucc in that it should not be implemented in Nag uh, in Nagaland, at least for now the party uh, had said that the law commission of india implementing the uniform civil court will have a negative impact on the freedom and rights of minority communities and of course it will impact the rights of tribal people of india in general earlier the ndpp had issued a statement i think it was during march and april saying that the process of implementing the code is still at the nascent stage too early we need a lot of discussions we need to have a lot of consultations we need to engage with the community leaderships and really study and examine what the uniform civil uh, civil court will mean for Nagaland if at all it's implemented and if it's implemented what will be its long-term impact on the social cu cultural character especially in terms of the practices of the Naga people so the NDPP strongly urged during that time to and it urged the central government and the 22nd law commission to reconsider the matter that was earlier this year. Uh, federalism is also a part of the basic structure of the Indian constitution, the, uh, the party said, which should never be changed or manipulated in any way. That's what the party said. So the, the NDPP was arguing that the idea of India was based on tolerance, respect for all sections of the people regardless of their faith and based on which the NDPP had said earlier that the UCC should not be implemented in Nagaland. Anyhow, coming back to the address of the Chief Minister in the Assembly, Mr. Nifirio said the apparent objective of the UCC is to have a single law on personal matters such as, as we talked earlier, marriage is there, divorce is there, custody of children, uh, guardianship, adoption of children, maintenance, succession, and of course, inheritance right. So these are the elements of the UCC. So the people of Nagaland and Nagas in general view that the Uniform Civil Court, in fact, will pose a very big threat to the customary laws and social and religious practices of the Naga people. This would endanger and also 
encourage more attempts to encroach into the constitutional rights that is given to the state of Nagaland as a political entity. The chief minister also said that the government of Nagaland uh, in a cabinet decision submitted it, its views on the subject to the law commission earlier in July 4th. Uh, the government has said that its opposition to the Uniform Civil Court was on the grounds of the unique history of the people of Nagaland. And of course, there is uh, the constitutional guarantee given under Article 371A. So the Chief Minister said that uh, in the meeting with various community leaderships organized by the government and engagement with the community leadership during September, uh, various community leaders uh, such as those from the tribal halls and organizations had expressed their strong resentment and objection to the idea of having the uniform civil court in any way. That's what the chief minister said. He, he also, of course, mentioned Article 371, which is a constitutional safeguard, a constitutional guarantee that is given to the state of Nagaland. He mentioned that it provides, the constitution itself in Article 371A, provides for the protection of all religious and social and cultural and traditional practices of the Naga people. That's what the chief minister said uh, earlier on June 14. Uh, the 22nd Law Commission had invited views and opinions from the public and also from the religious organizations to examine the Uniform Civil Code before its implementation. Uh, the demand to implement the Uniform Civil Code has come up many times, ladies and gentlemen, notably in 1985, during the hearing of the Shah Banu case especially. So the Supreme Court here ruled that Shah Banu, a Muslim woman who was divorced by her husband, should be given financial support. And that is the conversation from which the Uniform Civil Code came in. This led to a lot of protests since this was against Muslim personal laws, ladies and gentlemen. However, this was overturned by the Rajiv Gandhi government, which did not want to, uh, according to media observers, ruffle the feathers of the religious conservative and the religious communities in India, especially in the context of the Muslim community. So people who oppose the Uniform Civil Code say that the uh, court could infringe upon religious freedom and might clash with religious practices because India is a diverse nation with various and many cultures. There are arguments that different communities should have to, the right to maintain their own distinct customs and practices and that a law should not be implemented based on this code on minority communities without their constant. This is their main statement. Uh, once the code is implemented, ladies and gentlemen, it will effectively remove all the different, different laws which govern various religious and social groups. Whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, whether you're Hindu, anyone, there will be no distinctions. And if in case, uh, let's say you're divorcing someone, uh, the law that you use to divorce someone in your community, let's say you're a Christian, will not be applicable if the Uniform Civil Code comes in. The same rule will apply to a divorce case in a Muslim or Hindu community. You get the idea. The code will instead create a set of new laws that are uniform across the board. So this is the reason why both religious and social minorities in India are opposing the Uniform Code as it infringes on their social and religious customs, which I must add here, ladies and gentlemen, this is their identity. Uh, it is also true that the objective of the Uniform Civil Code is to implement the right to equality enshrined in Article 14 and the prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth enshrined in Article 15 of the Constitution of India. However, uh, as nice and positive and no noble as the intention is, the Uniform Civil Code will also wipe out one of the most central elements of religious and social identity. And I think this is the main context that 
those who, who are opposing the code are using as a way to push across their message. Uh, Article 371A of the Indian Constitution for Nagaland is a guarantee. It guarantees a high degree of autonomy and self-governance to the state of Nagaland. Uh, it was inserted by the Constitution uh, by the 13th Amendment Act of 1962 following a 16-point agreement between the Center and the Naga People's Convention in 1960. So this uh, agreement led to the creation of Nagaland as a separate state in 1963. So Article 371A states that no act of the parliament in respect of religious or social practices of the Nagas, Naga customary law and procedures, administration and civil and criminal justice involving decisions according to Naga customary law, ownership and transfer of land and its resources shall apply to Nagaland unless the state assembly decides by the resolution to not do so or to do so and that exactly is what the second session of the 14th Nagaland Legislative Assembly did yesterday when it started discussions on the Uniform Civil Code. Ladies and gentlemen, this Article 371, this provision is to protect and preserve the unique identity our culture and traditions and customs so uh, it is a constitutional a very powerful constitutional guarantee that the nagaland legislative assembly employed yesterday to decide against implementing the or accepting the uniform civil code in other words article 371a enables the people of Nagaland to maintain their distinct identity and way of life while being part of the Indian Union. That's all for now ladies and gentlemen that was a brief explainer on why the government of Nagaland rejected the Uniform Civil Code. We'll be bringing you more news updates and of course conversations besides explainers to explain some of them interesting events in the country and across the world too. Thank you for watching Hornbill TV. I'm Al Nguli. See you next time.